Yes. Once I put them in there. And them dosi. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have got a short statement to make. Uh, I will be speaking fast, and a few of my colleagues will uh, chip in. Uh, but first and foremost is simply to give the whole country, indeed the whole world, an update on the ongoing mandamani. Now in its third wave, a second day. We are extremely delighted by the very, very successful uh, mandamani that is now underway. And we must salute all Kenyans, wherever they are, for turning up in their numbers since yesterday to demonstrate their disapproval of the way the country is being governed, but more particularly to express their dissent against the draconian taxes that have been imposed uh, on the public uh, by this regime uh, through the now ill-fated Finance Act 2023. The town out across the country since yesterday has been beyond our expectations. <coughs> and this is a testament to the fact that the people have now owned the movement. It's no longer about to Raila Udinga, Alonso Musioka, Mata Karua, or Azimio generally. But it's all about the Kenyan people against the regime in power. So we are very delighted and very, very encouraged. We look forward to a very, very successful conclusion of this wave tomorrow evening. As we speak, Kenyans are out in their numbers, in their thousands, across the country. In some places, the media have not been able to access, I'm sure. But the reports we are getting are overwhelming. The few that you see coming out to drive in the cities are basically coming to replenish their stocks. They go back to continue with the uh, descent. But more critically, let me also, on behalf of my colleagues, thank profusely the motorists, especially drivers of long distance trucks, who in solidarity with the Kenyan people about their suffering have kept of the highways, the major highways in this country since yesterday morning. In fact, since Tuesday evening. It's an encouragement that they have realized that Kenyans cannot uh, continue life as usual. But now, to the graver issue, we have noted with utmost concern <coughs> the unprecedented level of police brutality targeted at innocent, peaceful, and armed Kenyan citizens. In fact, we are worried that there could have been instruction to the police to carry out what I would term as execution of citizens in broad daylight. We have seen them. There are videos doing the rounds, all of them, of police or people masquerading as police because some of them are in civilian clothes. Killing Kenyans in broad daylight. In broad daylight. It is something that has never been witnessed, even in the most dictatorial states and systems. It reminds us of the happenings in Cambodia 
under the late dictator, Pol Pot. I'm sure you know, those of you who have read history. So this police, police brutality is alarming, to say the least. And we want the international community and international agencies, especially the United Nations Human Rights Office, to not only comment on these matters regularly, but also to take serious note of him to holding to account the perpetrators of these heinous crimes. But in the same vein, we are asking formally the Director of Public Prosecution to exercise their constitutional mandate and carry out impartial, independent, and speedy investigations into these matters with a view to apprehending the perpetrators and charging them. But in the event that that, that, that doesn't happen, as most, like, most likely it won't, we are asking the ICC to take a keener interest in the Kenyan situation. In the Kenyan situation. Because what we are witnessing is basically crimes against humanity. And in fact, genocide in the making. Because these attacks, first of all, are permitted. They are planned, but more ominously, they are targeted at specific sections of the population, which are the clear ingredients of international crime, or crime against humanity. So we shall, be, of course, we shall be releasing a more detailed statement on this issue in the coming days. The third issue is the matter of the unlawful, unconstitutional arrest and abductions of Kenyans, including leaders who are elected, <coughs> like my brother Babu Owin, the MP for Mbakasi East, and Ken Chonga, MP for Kilifi South, the Speaker of the County Assembly of Kilifi, Honorable Butedi Mambiri and many others across the country. Honorable Babu, for instance, called me at around midnight on Tuesday that I am at the airport and I've been arrested. A few minutes later, I tried to call him back. I couldn't get him. Up to now, I've not been able to reach uh, Honorable Babu on the phone. And his whereabouts are unknown. And his wife has been all over police stations in Nairobi and in the neighborhood. We are also aware <laughs> of the arrest, indeed abduction, of Mr. Mainanjeng and a few of his colleagues. The issue is this. If the police have a case against somebody, why don't you summon them? Or simply arrest them in a civil manner, take them to the police station, book them, prepare the charge sheet, produce them in court, and argue your case or prosecute your case. In any case, it is against the Constitution, clear provisions of the Constitution, to hold any person, not just an MP, any person, for more than 24 hours without producing them in court. It's the first time this is happening since the promulgation of the 2010 Constitution. It's the first time you're witnessing a scenario where the police or people masquerading as the police can hold a Kenyan for more than 24 hours, in communicado, to make it worse. So we are also calling upon the international community to take note of these atrocities, of this happening. Finally, we are hoping that they will end well across the country. But tomorrow again we are back. Kenyans will be back to demonstrate against all these legal uh, proposals and the legal practices by the regime. From here, today, I think at around 3 p.m., Kenyans will be converging at Central Park in Nairobi, you know, where it is. At around 3 p.m., 
Kenyans will be converging at the Central Park in the Nairobi CBD to continue with the protests and demonstrations. And we call upon the police to provide security to both the demonstrators and the general public. Security to the peaceful demonstrators and the general public. We commit that we shall continue to remain peaceful throughout, <coughs> whether provoked or not. We want to appeal to our brothers and sisters in the National Police Service to also understand that what we are doing is basically also to their benefit. Kenyans who are turning up in their numbers to agitate are simply doing so on behalf of themselves and on behalf of every other Kenyan, including the police officers. So thank you very much. Uh, all the issues that we wanted to address this afternoon, I can only add and say that the Kenya Kwanzaa regime promised that in order to deal with uh, Azimio, they were going to suspend the constitution of Kenya. And indeed, the events of the last days, the last few days, have demonstrated that indeed Kenya Kwanzaa has suspended the constitution. We have seen the illegal abductions of leaders. We have seen the heightened police brutality. We have seen even the illegal implementation of the Finance Act, which is before court. We have evidence that though the matter is in court, this rogue regime has gone ahead and is quietly implementing the finance, uh, finance Act. We have also seen that the right to assemble has been violated. The right to picket has been violated. And we have all seen even the shootings of innocent Kenyans. We saw a young boy an innocent boy who was not even demonstrating, being shot in the leg. We have seen a rogue policeman in plain cloth shooting an innocent Kenyan. We are asking the international community to note the violation of human rights in this country. We are asking the media to take keen interest in the violation of human rights in this country. And we are asking Kenyans not to tire up. Come out. The collection of signature is ongoing. What is happening should actually inform many Kenyans to go to the to mychoka.net and post their signatures, sign in solidarity with the Kenyans who want progress because we cannot allow this country to descend to the old Kanu days. We know those who are in power have never been for reforms. Those who are in power are the ones who are beating the people who brought second liberation in this country and they are back. We should not allow them to take us back to the old dark days when every Kenyan leaders were terrorized, were tortured, they took away our security illegally so that they can abduct us. We are not going to be silenced, Mr. Ruto. We are not going to be silenced, Mr. Gashagwa. Kenya is ours and Kenya is Marwa. Thank you. Basi mimi kama mama nita inaomba amani. Kwa maana kunapokuwa na machafuko ya kisiasa ama kwa jamii wanaoumia zaidi ni kina mama na watoto. Hakika kufikia hapo tumeona kwamba wa Kenya kina mama, vijana, watoto, wazee wanateseka kwa uongozi wa dhuluma, kwa uongozi wa kukosa haki za kibinadamu kwa uongozi usiostahili kwa karne hii. Kwa hivyo mimi naomba serikali iliyoko ambao si halali waachane na wakenya waishi kwa amani. Na kwa hakika ninaomba 
kwa kweli hii Kenya kama walioko kwa serikali ya Kenya kuisha wanataka kuendelea mkiwa wa Kenya wote waishe mtaongoza nani tukifa wote mtaongoza nani kwa hivyo ninaomba askari polisi na wanaotumika hata kama si askari halisi tafadhalini komesheni fifo za wa Kenya tumechoka na ni lazima hii serikali iondoke mamlakani Kenya isonge mbele asante I want to add is uh, first of all to thank uh, members of the media for the very good work you're doing to cover these demonstrations under very difficult circumstances. We have seen a trend where the government has decided now to have plain clothes police officers camouflaged in different uh, formations. Yesterday in Madare constituency, you saw there was one person who was shot in the leg, peaceful and unarmed to their informal settlement in their houses. There was a person camouflaging and masquerading as a member of the media who abducted that person and that person to this place or this time is incommunicado. So we ask the media also, even as they were covering yesterday, you remember to please cover in your item in particular, citizen, there were things that happened in Manare and they were reported as things happening somewhere. Nobody knows where they were. These were incidences happening in Madare, and we want to ask you to be very specific so that the people of Madare can also get their justice. There are people who have died, there are people who have been shot, there are colleagues of ours who have been arrested, and the only conclusion you can make is that there is a clear command structure. That command structure began with a meeting in State House. A meeting in State House that was clearly giving directions to members of parliament to retreat to their constituencies. We have information that each of them was funded to the tune of 250,000 and their MCAs as well. You have seen a member of parliament as a result of that direct instruction from State House, wielding a gun in Kisi, yeah, in Nakuru, in complete violation of the constitution. Obviously, this member of parliament misread Article 37. While our people are peaceful, this member of parliament forgot to read that part of the act that says peaceful and unarmed. Show me which members of our protesters and the Kenyan people were armed yesterday. You have seen that the hooliganism that is being meted is being meted by state-sponsored mercenaries. This must stop. The very way to matters. Thank you very much, uh, members of the press. First, I would like to appreciate the media for the coverage uh, you've been uh, doing, and especially for the specific uh, photos and videos of the violations we've seen from police officers or people masquerading as police officers. And policemen and police officers in Kenya need to know that when the law will begin chasing them down, they will be alone. At least now we have gotten photos of two police officers, one who got into an alley and killed two, three people, and then walked back, who was covered in some uh, funny headgear. And then the other one who was involved in literally breaking a protester's hand in broad daylight, violating their rights. Uh, we appreciate the media for doing that, and we urge you to continue doing your job. The other thing we would like to talk about is that demonstrations are ongoing. We haven't stopped. In Mombasa, they know where they should be meeting in uh, Kakamega, various parts of the country, and as the uh, leader has said, in Nairobi we are meeting at Central Park in the next hour or two, and in Kisi people will be meeting at uh, Capital Roundabout. And we encourage our people to continue being peaceful in their demonstrations. It is the police officers that continue to uh, uh, disorganize them and attack them unfairly, and we are telling uh, the government and members of parliament from Kenya Kwanza that while you organize your militia to try and frustrate our efforts, 
we are being provoked to the extent we are also going to organize ourselves. And that is going to ruin our country. We encourage the Kenya Human Rights Commission and the various uh, uh, civil society organizations to also be on the watch on the brutality that these police officers are meeting on Kenyans. Thank you. Yes. Brutality. In our constitution of Kenya, we created the uh, IPOA. That's a police oversight authority, which we are calling them to them now to stand up. It's their time now to investigate this police brutality. We are aware that the photos, and since we began this mandamano, the photos of the police officers who have been given express authority or direction to kill leaders, innocent protesters, that have been splashed all over. It's time my poor must now take seriously its responsibility, its mandate under the Constitution, and bring to book these heinous crime, uh, these, he these criminal murderers that we are masquerading, that as professional police officers. It would be in vain for them to remain on salary, occupy offices, and they are doing nothing to save the people of Kenya. Thank you. Asante ni sana kwa the state uh, kwa kuweza kutupa hii coverage ya kutosha. Yangu ni kushtumu. Kwanza nitaanza na hao mapolisi. Nyinyi mapolisi, nyinyi pia muko na watoto, muke, muko na wake, muko na ndugu. Na sisi tunaomba watoto wenu pia na ndugu zenu wafanywe vile nyinyi mnafanya watoto wa wenzenu. Tunasema sisi wenyewe mapolisi tunawatetea nyinyi na nyinyi ndio wa kwanza kutumwa na kuua. Mimi niko na motion eh, Senate ya, ya police eh, mental health ya kutetea bado mapolisi ili wasaidike lakini nyinyi mapolisi tunashangaa vile tuna, na tunawashtumu vikali hii serikali ya Kenya kwisha na nyinyi pia mnafurahi vile watoto wetu na ndugu zetu na kila mtu anauliwa na nyinyi tunawaombea na lenu itafika siku moja ndugu zenu watu wenu watafanyika vile vile mumefanya wa Kenya wenzenu hii serikali sio ya Kenya kwanza kwenye Kenya kwisha peke yake lakini ni ya wa Kenya wote tunashtumu vikali mauaji <coughs> kuumiza watu kuvunjika kwa watu lakini na nyinyi yenu itafika ya pili yangu ni wa Kenya msitishwe wa Kenya msibabaishwe Kenya ni yetu asante yeah. Uh, I wanted to add on top of what my colleagues have said, is that uh, the police across the country are apprehending and arresting innocent citizens and leaders who ideally have no, they have no uh, charge sheet to prefer them before courts. For instance, in Siaya, about 10 youths and two MCAs were arrested yesterday, and up to date they have not been taken to court and the police are saying that they need more time to do investigations. I don't know how many days they need. So what we are saying is that if the police have no reason to arrest anybody, I think they should just keep off. Because the instruction the police have been given from above is that they must arrest as many people as possible. And because if they do that, then they are going to, uh, the, the mandamano is going to come to, to, to an end. I want to say that, uh, as has been said, we are not going to stop. And if somebody thinks that by arresting a few people here and there, leaders are going to be uh, to fear, we are not going to fear, and we are calling upon our members across the country in Siaya, let us come out and let us demonstrate. And as my colleagues have also said, we are going to continue demonstrating today, tomorrow, until the government, the illegal government, is able to address the concerns of the people of Kenya. Thank you very much. They are being held beyond the limit provided for by the Constitution. Now we consider their continued uh, incarceration as detention without trial. And indeed, Kenyans and the international community must, also, must now take note that we have got political prisoners in the country. And the matter is now outside the scope of the law. And what Kilio Winner notice here? Yes, it's now outside the scope 
of the criminal justice process. Yes. Because the law is very clear. Both the Constitution and the Criminal uh, uh, Procedure Act on how suspects are supposed to be handled by law enforcement officers. We are proceeding, and as we said earlier on, at the end of the three tomorrow, we shall be giving the country further direction on the fourth week.